Doo -doo 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 -doo. Magic for normies. Hey everyone, it's Magic for Normies. Hey I'm, everyone. I'm Pixie Kitten. And, and I'm Zuby. And we are back for episode two of Magic for Normies. What's a normie? A normie. I had this question a lot after the first episode because <laughs> apparently this word isn't like common knowledge. A normie is a casual player. So that's what we mean when we say magic for normies. It's like magic for casuals, right? Extreme casuals. Extreme casuals. Like the casuals who are like bad, like real bad. Real, real, real bad. Oh, and right off the bat, Efren gets, shouts us out with welcome back, normies. With a, Hey, was it, normie he cheers Efren at us. giving us a cheer. Hey, what's up? Yay. Our number one normie, Efren. Yay. Yeah. Thanks to him, we came up with this show. Yep. it's He's pretty much the only reason we do it. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> he's, our, he's our only listener and watcher. That's okay. We appreciate it. Yay. No, we love you, Efren. We do. Um, so what are we what have we got going on tonight, Zuby? What's been going on with you lately? Um, God. It's so it's been what, a week and a half or no, two, two weeks. weeks. Yep. Two weeks since we've done this and um, so long. I I know. I have finally, finally, finally played some paper EDH after oh. like not playing paper EDH for months now. Oh, okay. And um I got to do some really dumb stuff. You played at like your LGS? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Played at my LGS with my friends and gotcha. I, I think I, I think I've told you before my friends all build degenerate decks. So I have to build a degenerate deck just to counter them. That's not nice. Um, That's not nice. But at all. I it is it is not nice. Um I will say one of the best games I had though was when the whole table, all of us lost against a persistent partitioner's deck. Ooh, because you can have like <laughs> as many as you want, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it was so much fun. So they had Leyline of the Void, which you know you don't get your graveyard. Everything goes into exile, oh and they gosh. just kept on milling the entire table, and it was so much fun. I wasn't even mad dying that way. So everybody lost to this player by being milled. Yes. That's awful. It was amazing. It was but hilarious. In Commander, you have a hundred card deck. Yeah, and, and I will I will say it took a long time for yeah. this person to do it. Yeah. Um, because for a long time we didn't really pay attention to them because there was too many other threats on the board. There was a sure. Nekasar deck, oh. which is very very dangerous, and then uh -huh. there was also a uh, um, oh crap, how do you say it? The Campbell, Campbell, whatever. Yes. Where whenever you play a non creature spell, you lose two life. Okay. Yes. Uh, and then I was playing um. The hell was I? Th I think I was playing Omnath at Ooh, the time. Omnath. Yeah, and I in in that same game I got to kill someone in one turn for forty damage with Warstorm Surge. Oh dang, that's intense. Yeah. Wow. And what about you? What about some EDH? You play any EDH lately? Um, actually, yes, I played EDH with some of the guys from Card Sphere, Ted and Efren, who are in chat. Hi, friends. Um, hi everybody that has joined us. Hey at Flowery. Um, that's that's Andy from the Guardian podcast. Oh, um, hey. am I saying that right? The Guardian. Um, oh, hey Muhammad. The Guardian What's Project that? podcast. Okay, the Guardian Project. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so yes, I played EDH. I played Paper EDH with uh, Mr. Kitten and Ted and Efren, and we played through Discord where we all had cameras set up like over our desks and we we that's cool played paper edh yeah all across all across the world because you know ted's in canada that's like a whole nother country a eh? it, it technically is yeah yeah eh. <laughs> my, my wife's actually thinking about going to canada later this year oh really um it seems kind of like a scary place it's like crazy people there i mean you know <laughs> you know ted right <laughs> Oh God! He's is, kind of crazy. Is he though? 
I mean, well, no, I've had him on the podcast on Magic Mizubi <laughs> before, and he he seemed really cool. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. He's he's a really nice guy, very nice guy. Oh, that and would, and we had him good. on the. Didn't we have him on the um the the Magic Jeopardy episode yes. of Ten Street Hooligans? Yes, he was on That's our right. game show episode of Ten Street Hooligans. Yes, they. You know what? You know what they say in Canada? They call macaroni and cheese craft dinner. <laughs> That's what they call so, it. So. Holy shit. So that's actually a thing. That, yes. That, yes. So it's so it's not just from South Park because that's all I've ever heard it from was South Park. It's not a joke. That's what they call macaroni <laughs> and cheese. They call it craft dinner. You see Ted telling us in chat right now. <laughs> oh my god. Well hey everybody, get some craft dinner. Okay. It's hey there, a buddy. real thing. It's a real oh thing. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. So oh anyways. that's right. And, and Efren said, Yeah, he has three nipples. That's right. Oh, Ted. Yeah. We're, we're just blasting Ted's info out right now. Yeah, we, we are. So, yeah, Ted from Card Sphere. Everybody go check out Card Sphere. It's great. Yeah, and, and, cards. and yeah, and what is it? Oh, and the stream elements came up just perfectly. And what is this uh, <laughs> yeah. show sponsored by, P Pixie? Card Sphere, of course. You can see, like, the colors of the show or Card Sphere's colors. And we've got a spinning <laughs> logo here. And you're wearing the hat. I'm not wearing yeah, any ooh, of my Card Sphere right. gear right now, but. We do love card sphere. Mm. Um, yes. So, anyways, I played some EDH. Um, I was the first player to get killed in that game. So that sounds rude. Yeah, that was mean. That was really mean. Uh, but it was still really a lot of fun, and we're actually doing it again tomorrow night. So I'm looking forward oh. to it. Yeah. Oh dang! I wish I could join. That's my night where I do D and D. Where oh, I DM at the, my LGS. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to try and work something out another night with you for sure, oh, though. God. Because, yeah, I'd love to play with you all. Yeah, it's pretty pretty easy to get set up with your webcam if you've already got a webcam. Yes, and I've got a tripod just to be able to play Paper Magic now. Nice. Very nice. Very, very, so, very nice. So, one other thing I wanted to mention about EDH, and I know yeah. you're going to hate me for this, Pixie, is um. so last Sunday I played my Chulane deck. Do you uh -oh. remember what Chulane does? Um, Chulane, re refresh my memory. So he's Bant colors, uh, green, yes. white, blue. Gotcha. And whenever you cast a creature's card, you draw a card and you may put a land out onto the battlefield. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, that is so, just so n nasty OP. It's it's stupid. So I had a yeah. lot of ETB effect creatures and I did, I had the new Thassa out, the new Thassa that blinks. Oh, and, boy. And and I was blinking back a Rachiomancer, which allows you to return target instance or sorcery from your graveyard back to your hand. And so I kept getting back Render Silent, which reads, you counter target spell that player can't cast any more spells that turn. So, and it was only me and one other person left, and he got me down to four life. So I just kept on bouncing back Render Silent over and over again to slowly start pinging and killing them. Wow. And it was so disgusting. Yeah. I, I must have cast it like 10, 10 turns yeah, in a row. Yeah, that's, that's awful. You should feel really bad about yourself. I, I actually do a little bit because I need to find ways to win faster. I didn't feel bad about countering. That would be so slow. It really would. It, it was. It. I. I. I did admit to because he's my friend and all that, and I told him like I know this is. It's very slow. Yeah. And that's why I'm. I need to invest in a crater hoof behemoth. I would have been just, real salty. I would have been like, I'm done. Bye. Well, and so he did get back at me in the next game. He played Captain Sisse. Okay. And he ended up mind slavering me over and over again. Oh. Do you know what mind slaver? No. Mind slaver is I'm you get to control. Me, Zuby. I don't know what these cards do. That's right. It's, I keep forgetting you're only like two years old in magic. It's true. In magic terms. Um. Yeah. So mind slaver basically allows you to um control target player's turn. So he just kept on controlling my turn over and over again. Oh my gosh. To, to get back at me, and I told him I'm not even mad that you did that. So yeah, you deserved it for sure. <laughs> oh, I definitely did. You did, yeah, you did. Okay, well, that's some interesting EDH stuff that we've had going on in our lives recently. Um, I wanted to talk about real quick um, the Magic Creator program for oh. content creators. Um, I don't know if you're not a content creator, it, you may not even know much about this, but um, Wizards of the Coast is doing this program where they they have incentives for people to pretty much stream Arena 
Um, they give you codes to give out to your community if you if you do special things while playing arena, like build an all creatures deck and yeah. win a game with with the creatures deck, or build a Vraska deck and win a game using her um, her ultimate ability or something like that. Yeah, and then you get the codes to give out to your community, which. Um, I think is really great because literally any creator can sign up for this. And if you're already streaming Arena, then what's the difference? You're actually getting something, getting the codes to give out to your community for doing something you're already doing. Um, and there was like backlash about it when it first came out, but I think it's yeah. a great idea. Um, are you involved in the program, Zuby? Uh, yes, I am, and I've already done a bunch of the challenges uh, oh. last month, and oh, cool. gave out a bunch of codes. And it, it's it can be it's pretty fun, it, yeah. depending on the challenge, of course. There are some challenges where I'm like, I'm gonna have to spend hours and hours and hours to try to get this one challenge, and I'm just yeah. like, no. But but for the most part, you to it's break fun. it up, like break up your yeah. regular routine and do different things or build different decks that you wouldn't typically do. Um, and there was some discussion about how Wizards was going to support creators that aren't streamers. And using a program like that, I kind of think that they could support creators that aren't streamers. Like, if you're making a podcast or even writing an article, they could maybe be given some sort of direction to write about a specific thing or... or get feedback yeah. from the community or a new product that's coming out or you know i don't know something like that i feel like you could do with creators that aren't streamers yeah i i feel like so there's already a few challenges out there now that um allow you to submit videos mm -hmm. um like pre-recorded videos on you know being able to get the codes and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a good start. And I agree that they need to start incorporating podcasts, articles, and the other mm -hmm. kind of stuff out there too that does yeah. content creation. Because, I mean, let's just be honest. Streaming is the biggest thing right now in terms of yeah. content creation. And For sure. You know, gone are the old days of making YouTube videos. I mean, they're still there. They're still really popular and all that stuff, but... That's it's, what um, I like to do, make YouTube videos. And that's I what well, that's why I like make a podcast too because it's a radio show. Yeah. <laughs> but um no, I mean it's it's just the way of the times and I just yeah. hope that Wizards continues to try to at least do something for someone for yeah. people like us. I know. think I think they are um definitely going in the right direction. I think it's a nice first step. Yeah, Ted Ted just mentioned that um Ellie wrote a really great article about this entire topic yes, on she did. Card Sphere's blog. I read it and yeah, it really it really was great. Yeah, she she did. She I even answered a bunch of questions for her and we went back oh, and nice. forth on it and um it's uh she had a lot of good points. Yeah. Um podcasters are just content creator normies. What? What? Podcasters That's are just F content creator normies? How dare you? Yeah, how dare you? Because, <laughs> yeah. listen, Megan and Maria are podcasters, and they are not normies. They well, are, like, the pinnacle. Well, uh, but aren't they super casual, though? I mean, no. They, like, go to all of the events, and they know everything that's going on. And well, Maria's, like, the the announcer. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she's, um... Oh, oh they have pro points? Oh, Oh, so I guess they aren't normies anymore. They are definitely not normies. They know way too much about this game. They are beyond normies. Like, listen. Well, I thought they started off like being normies. No, they did I... start out being normies for sure because their podcast was originally called Magic the Amateuring. The... Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. Yeah. So they started out as normies, but they have moved past normies real fast. I mean, like, so, like, Maria, Maria announced it is an announcer for, like, some of the events and stuff and she has to like know what what she's talking about and what cards people are yeah, playing and stuff that, and i if i was up there i would just be like oh my god they're playing a counter spell like wow what a dirty card you know but she's she knows what's going on they're, they're yeah i, I guess that is true yeah for okay sure. I, I i guess that is true i guess yeah because you don't really see him do pro play and 
Um, but yeah, uh, who, who said in chat they have? Pro yeah, Andy says they have pro points. Holy shit! I did yeah. not know that. They started as normies, but they got good. It's true. Yeah, they got good. It's yeah, true. we're normies forever. <laughs> normies forever. I don't know <laughs> what that do, was. I don't do know the, what hand, that was. the hand symbol. I don't know what oh, that gosh. was. Let's let's edit that out. Let's edit that part out. Just oh, kidding. one thing I wanted show. to. Oh, so so still talking about the creator program. Yes. Um, the so a lot of the rewards they're giving out right now like you mentioned are community codes which can be any random a lot of random stuff it's mm -hmm. i've seen it as low as like an uncommon card to people getting gems or like a few rare cards and all that mm -hmm. do you think those are pretty decent for the rewards for now or should there be something more to give out to your community um i think for most of the challenges, I think that they're scaled pretty appropriately. Like, you know, if they just want you to build a silly deck and play it, like, you mean, what kind of reward do you expect? You know what I mean? But I think getting like 20 codes for your community is, I guess it depends on the size of your community. Like, for me, yeah. that would be a lot. But, yeah. um,. I don't know. I guess maybe somebody with a really large community, that wouldn't be quite as much. But I don't have a problem with it right now. I, I don't know what they're going to do going forward. And honestly, like, in my opinion, they could do nothing. Like, they could easily just do nothing. But they're trying to do something. Yeah. And I really think it's the right direction. They're really trying to support all of us in some way yeah. and i think that's a good thing it's definitely yeah, a because, step in the right direction yeah because the the, e, the one of the things that eli mentions in her article or not eli ellie yeah um elizabeth I'm, yes uh, I, i'm i'll just say elizabeth there you go that works <laughs> it, it's, it's easier for yeah. me um uh, what elizabeth says in her article is and what we also talked about back and forth was you know what do you do for the smaller streamers or the smaller content creators that you know if we were to just if wizards were to pay you actual money you know then they're going to completely ignore the smaller content creators this is yeah. a way for them to b include be yes. inclusive yes. with yes. the smaller with the smaller Everyone. small fries mm -hmm. and and the normies and, and the normies and you still <laughs> even get a little something out of it because they also give you personal game codes, which you can yeah. give away to your community. There are a thousand gems. You can either keep it for yourself or mm -hmm. give it to your community, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah, it's and it, it's more like you said, if you're streaming anyway, yeah. you know, this is just another way to, you know, help yourself out. Yeah. And get more yeah. engagement in your community, you know, just make things a little bit more exciting with the codes and stuff. I, yeah. I think it's a good thing all around for sure. Yeah. Um, so let's jump into our topics for tonight. What have we got first? Oh, first one is I'm super, super, super excited about this. And usually I don't get that excited about ancillary products like you this. You poo-poo on them like real hardcore, typically. Yeah, most of the time. And yeah. this is the new one is Jumpstart. Yeah. I am so excited about this because it, it's, um, it's sort of what I wish the unsets were yeah in a sense because i love the idea of unsets but i never play them past like a pre-release because you can't do anything with the cards yeah after the true. fact i've never had i've never played when an unset has been released like this unsanctioned i think just came out yeah and this is my first one and like i didn't even get any because i thought why it will unsanction is more like a board game like you just you buy it and it comes with pre-constructed decks or something and you play play against them but oh. the so unstable which was the last one is sort of like a regular magic set release okay but it but and you did a pre-release and like it, it was fun for the first time but then after that you're like i never want to play it again yeah because you can't do anything with the cards and yeah the only the, the only worthwhile thing for getting the actual cards is the basic lands yeah yeah people love those lands right yeah so the thing i really like about jumpstart is mm -hmm. from what i understand is all you need to be able to build a deck is you take two booster packs mm -hmm. and you just mash them together mm -hmm. and 
there you go. You got a deck. Yeah. Um, and, I'm really excited about it, too. I think this is a great product for normies. Oh, my God. And, yeah. Uh, so I'm, great. I, I can't wait to play it. The And a lot of the booster, I, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell what theme is on each booster pack. You but can't. there's going to be. It's, it's oh, going to be can't. a oh, surprise. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, so each one's going to be a surprise because there's themes for each booster. Like yes. some are goblins, some are like cats, some are yeah. pirates, some yeah. stuff like that. I looked like this that. up somewhere. I looked this up somewhere. There's like there's like 36 or 46 different themes. Like there's a lot. That's and, awesome. And they're just all going to be random. So yeah, you won't know what's in there. And you just mix two of them together and then you have like your like pirate cats or whatever your two random themes are so yeah. um yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to it i think it'll be a lot of fun yeah i well one first thing we have to say is you and i are gonna have to definitely play this on stream yeah um, let's do it and like I, I don't even i'll even buy a box of this too just to yeah i think I think I just like I said before like I think this is a great product for normies like you don't have to worry about building a deck like you literally just put the cards together and that's also what everybody else is going to be doing you know it's better than like um it's better than like if you get a planeswalker deck or something right that's a pre-constructed yeah. deck but those are bad really bad yeah. and nobody else is playing that like you can't play that against anyone ever no, they're they're always terrible. Yeah, but this is like there's even going to be a pre-release for this product, so yeah. it's like you're really just going to get to play this against other people, and there's going to be a real place for it, and it's super casual because you don't have to do anything except just put the cards together. And I feel like this is also a really great product for new players as well, too, because yeah. because th think about it, one of the most daunting things for new players is building a deck yeah. right mm -hmm. i mean you you try to get them into because this is sort of like combines limited and constructed into one mm -hmm. and what limited is my favorite you know way to play like especially cube and sealed yeah. and all that so this sort of brings my love of sealed and constructed together and mm -hmm. if, if i want to get someone new who you know knows how to play magic but doesn't really know much about sealed or anything mm -hmm. boom this is perfect yeah and they'll have like a unique deck also you know yep. it'll be like their own little thing um and i think i remember seeing that each booster pack is gonna have like a themed land in it too which oh is super cool. exciting because like what does that even mean what is a cat themed land I have no idea. They said they said there's going to be almost 500 reprints, which I'm fine with. It's, yeah. And, and hopefully there's a lot of cool reprints, too. Um, they also did say there are going to be a lot of um, uh, Corset 2021 cards in this as well, too, which yes. is fine. Which, That's and fine. it's coming out at, like, the same time or the yeah. same day or the next week or something. And, I, I, and this is where the best thing is, is these are going to be legal and legacy vintage and commander mm, yeah right. these, these are not going to be pioneer modern legal cards but they will be legacy vintage and commander playable yeah so That'll commander the the normie yeah. format yeah the normie format um ted says that he can't imagine the decks can be both good and balanced which makes me fear for new players for experienced players it's a diversion that's fun he wants to try it yeah, yeah it makes I me mean, feel. I don't it, know. It's it's possible. I mean that that is true. We don't know. I mean, we're, there's just like anything. There's a lot of speculation. We don't know yeah. what cards are going to be in it. We don't know what the power level is going to be like. And yeah, you know, to me, this is sort of like um, uh, since there's going to be like 500 cards, it's almost sort of like a chaos sealed yeah. sort of. Yeah, that you kind don't of. have to that you don't have to worry about building. You just put the booster pass together. Boom. Yeah, I think it'll be great. I'm I hope it'll be great because it sounds really fun and I like that it's something totally different but also like real easy cuz you yeah. know Yeah. Well what's also cool is they're going to bring this to Arena as well too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to they're going to be bringing it to Arena and it'll be like the next um it'll like the it'll historic be anthology. They're the next historic set. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Um that'll be great. Hey, thank you for the follow. 
Uh, I don't think it's Andy. <laughs> J just say Andy. It's easier. Thanks, Andy. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> hey there, MTG strategist. What's up? Hey, JJ. Hey, let's play our theme song real quick. Oh, yeah. Do 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 do. Magic for normies. Boom. <laughs> that is so good. I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to get the ad out there that I made, too. Oh, that's right. We're for... making a commercial for Magic for Normies. It's going to be real good. It's almost done. I just got to do the finishing touches of it, and it's um hilarious. I it's think you really all will love funny. it. Yeah, it's really funny. I don't mean to like toot my own horn, but it's funny. I didn't write it though, Zuby wrote it, so he gets all the credit yeah. for the comment. I, I just thought of it while driving to work one day. I had to go down to the office one day and just it just popped up in my head. Yeah, it happens. It's great. So that's going to be Jumpstart. I'm super excited about it. Can't wait for it. Yes, yes, um, yes. Same. And so I guess we can move on to our next topic. Do you want to bring, do you want to talk about the next topic? Okay, bring well, it up. I'll, yes, but I haven't heard anything about this. Okay, so would you play Magic at a GameStop? Is this a thing? I've never heard yes. of it before. Apparently, there are a few stores um, in the U.S. that are starting to do this now. Um, and it looks like they're they're doing it in Tulsa, Oklahoma to start okay. off with. Hey. Out of all the places in the U.S., Tulsa, okay. Oklahoma. <laughs> sure, somewhere. So, I mean, I guess GameStop is is like a it's like an LGS, but it's just, you know, not your local game store. It's your countrywide store. What am I trying to say here? It's your like <laughs> chain. It's like, you know, it's a chain. So, Corporate chain, essentially. Right. Yeah. So it seems a little weird, but it, I guess really is. what's the difference when it comes down to well, it? Well, the thing is, is that you know, this is going to if this becomes a thing, there is a big possibility this can push out a lot of small business LGSs. Yeah, that would be the concern. And 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 I and this is sort of like the next logical step for GameStop because they have been failing. Yeah, at, kind you know, of their dying. brick and mortar stores. Yeah, right. they've been dying for years now. Yeah. They've closed down so many stores worldwide. Yeah. Um. And because a lot of people will just buy their games on Amazon or buy them digital now because it's right. a lot cheaper. And if you have, when was the last time you went to a GameStop? Last weekend. And it's basically become almost like a toy store in a sense now, right? There's a lot of stuff in there, but I kind of like that because we don't. I oh, don't I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not downplaying it or anything. It's yeah. Just... The, but this, like, I don't have a good LGS near me, so like. Yeah. I go to the I go to the GameStop and they even sell some magic products. Like I'll go in there and yeah. look to see if they have any good stuff that's like on sale because they'll have magic products in there and it might be like older stuff, but it'll be on sale. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll get this bundle. Yeah, no, no, and and see for someone like you where you don't have a good LGS or you may mm -hmm. not have an LGS near your area, this could mm -hmm. be something that could be really useful good. for someone someone like you and yeah. um, but. As I said before, because GameStop for a long time was just nothing but video games. Now they've mm -hmm. gone out to, you know, selling shirts, toys, mm -hmm. you know, yep. all, all this other stuff. And so this is sort of the next step yeah. for them. And it's, I'll be curious to see if this goes further in the U.S., especially depending on which market. Um, you know, if, if this were to possibly come to let's just say it comes to my hometown or and i only have one lgs left and i've got two game stops here mm -hmm. it's, it's possible it could kill my local game store and i freaking love that place you know yeah yeah i mean i definitely don't want it to do that but like you were saying for people who don't have the lgs it might be a really nice alternative if they do expand it but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, how well is this going to go over in Oklahoma? So. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know no, any it's... magic players from Oklahoma. And it's not like I know a ton, but yeah. I don't know anybody from Oklahoma. Yeah. I mean, it's. It, it, it'll be. I'll be curious to keep watching this to see how well this does. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. Because it's. Like I said, I think it's the next logical step because 
you know, I feel like for a long time, a lot of people just played video games at home and didn't ever really want to go out and meet people. It, there was like that period of time where, you know, not a lot of people met up and played games together yeah. as much whenever like, you know, the Internet of Things really started happening. Maybe this mm -hmm. started happening around 2007, 2008. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's becoming more and more common for people to want to get together and play tabletop games, D&D, mm -hmm. &D, board yeah, games, I magic. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. Know? And it's getting more and more popular that people want that human interaction. Yeah. And it's, you know, if GameStop sees the writing on the wall, you know, hey, let's get into this business, you know. And, and the other thing that GameStop has that a lot of these uh, mom and pop shops don't is they've got GameStop's, you know, financial backing, even though they are losing yeah. a lot of money, but they could possibly get a lot of um, investors yeah. investing into them for this mm -hmm. you know so yeah it, it's, it, it it's a little scary to be honest for the small for the small shops it's if, interesting if this were to, to go. see what will happen but yeah because I think of j just bringing Florida here because we have Cool Stuff Inc. games here mm. and they have um I want to say three stores in Florida um so you know that could hurt them um there's star city well star city they, they don't have a store anymore i don't think they do dude does Star? I, don't, I can't remember i don't think channel fireball has a store anymore i don't know um, i'm too normie to know those things i can't remember i i'm, I'm a little uh yeah i don't know yeah um what what are there some big lgs chains are there any others that are i don't know um no. Chat, chat. Is there GameStop has Wi-Fi? I've only used it for the special Pokemon district. You could play Arena there. Uh, that's true. <laughs> there you go. That's true. I've never you know, tried my... to use GameStop Wi-Fi, but I might try now. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> see if their um, Wi-Fi is in it. Really, really. So the question is: Would you play Magic at a GameStop? Would I play Magic at a GameStop? Probably not. Because I'm so normie, I'm afraid, I'm really afraid to play magic with other people that I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't um, have anything to do with GameStop. No, and no, th that could be a whole other topic. Yeah, um, but, for sure. But um, it's, I see the possibility of, I mean, right now I wouldn't play magic at a GameStop, but if my LGS is closed nearby and I had no other choice. Yeah, I would, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I'd be grudgingly do it because I'd still want to keep my D and D and magic scene alive somehow. Well, if the D and D and magic scene moved over to the GameStop, I'd have to follow where the people are. You just have to I know. go. That's your people. Now they're GameStop people. Which, yeah, I don't know if I like that. Ugh. This is a downer. Dang. Okay, well, let's change the subject. Whoa, I almost dropped my phone. Um, okay. What did you do? I almost dropped my phone. I almost dropped my phone. Look how big it is. That would have been awful. Oh, my God. That's right. That's right. We were, uh, Zach and I were talking about that in, um, on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, on Twitter. Yes. About your huge, huge phone. Yeah, it's practically a tablet. Pretty much. Yeah. I'm not sorry. I love it. Okay, so next we're talking about what player archetype are you? Um, I don't know anything about this. I don't know anything about these words. All right, so let's go over each of the archetypes and let's try to figure out which archetype both of us are. Okay. Because um, this is this is always fun because I feel like myself personally, I sort of vary between. I, I guess it sort of depends on what type of di what day it is. Okay. Okay. What, what archetype I am. Um. So the first one is uh one of probably one of my favorite ones and that's a timmy slash tammy okay um a timmy or tammy is characterized by their tendency to use big creatures and cast big spells large exciting plays motivate them timmies are most associated with playing for fun and all kinds of huge creatures fantastic spells and mythical enchantments they're the most social archetype enjoying the interaction that magic provides a stereotypical timmy tam slash tammy is usually a younger player with a simple yet fun for them deck they do not care whether they win or lose, but want to have fun playing really big effects. Okay. Um, there are definitely days that I feel like a Timmy in EDH. Hmm. I don't feel... I don't... I've never felt like that. I don't really care to play big creatures. I like to play creatures, but not big creatures. 
Does that make a difference? Or, or, no, well, I mean, is... Do you, like, also cast... Well, because Timmy is a... So, Timmy or Tammy, whatever whatever yeah. various you want to use, yeah. um, they're most associated with playing for fun is the biggest thing. And that, that can include, you know, big creatures, awesome spells, cool enchantments. Um, okay. Doing janky stuff, like... I like to do college. janky stuff now. Yeah, your, your night deck, I remember. Okay. So, or the vampire. Okay, so I'm a maybe for that one. We'll have to All see. All right. Okay. I, I, my, one of my favorite decks to play is um, my Villas Brawl deck on Arena. Villas. Why can I not remember what that He's is? He's this Vilas. big, stupid demon that whenever, whenever you pay life for any sort of casting cost, you may draw a card or something like that. So you play a bunch of stuff where you where you pay life and you draw uh -oh. tons of cards and it's just like silly and stupid and I pretty much never win with the deck but I love <laughs> it I want it to be good but it's just not so maybe See, that would would qualify that that's a pretty Timmy deck okay okay well so, I love that deck so so let, let's get on the next one and let's see how this one you know call, speaks to you okay. so next one is Johnny slash Jenny. Okay. A Johnny or Jenny is characterized by their tendency to build complex and creative decks. They are most commonly known as a combo player. Oh, and they sometimes no. choose for elaborate but inefficient win conditions. They like to find interesting combinations of cards that can win the game or give them an advantage. Johnny may be a player who seeks niche cards or cards widely reputed as bad and tries to break them exploiting them in ways to give abnormal power and win the game. They are most happiest when their decks work and they win their way. For them, one in many one in many leaves them happy if that win is on their own terms. Um I don't know, like I kind of feel like that is maybe sort of how I feel about my Villas deck, but it's definitely not complex. It's just stupid. <laughs> I, I would never try to, I would never try to look for a bad card and play with it to break it like never. Okay. Um okay. So so you don't really like trying to Now I do like to I do like to find interesting combinations to play sometimes. Um like I built this fun deck that was um it was like a Revenge of Ravens and mm -hmm. um ill-gotten inheritance deck and so it was oh, like gross you're it, it was so it was like um you were you gain a lot of little life but then like every time you gain a life your opponents lose life with with the with the epicure of blood and stuff like that yeah so it was kind of a weird janky thing but i don't know like maybe that's more of a timmy deck i don't know uh, it, it, it you could almost construe it as almost a little bit of both because they're yeah and, and by combo, you know, a lot of people mistake combo as just like infinite combos or anything, something yeah. like that. But these could be, like they said, interesting combinations of cards where they work well together. They may not be very good, yeah. but but if you can manage to get the four or five pieces of that little combo out, you're yes. unstoppable. Yes, you and that, that's it, how I feel about this ill-gotten inheritance Revenge of Ravens deck. Like, you've got to have, like, these four cards. Otherwise, you're yeah. just like, this is dumb. Okay, so maybe I'm, okay. maybe I'm some like that. Okay, maybe. okay. This next one, I'm pretty sure both of us aren't this, but uh, next one is Spike. Okay. Spike is characterized by their competitive nature, and they play primarily to prove how good they are. Oh, I'm not even yeah. going to read the rest. It's no, no, that's not. <laughs> no, it's... no, I... I probably could have be, been considered a spike, you know, years ago, but not anymore. I don't care anymore about... I mean, I'm definitely winning. competitive, and uh, I mean, I want to win. Like, everybody wants to win, right? Yeah. But... But I'm, are you always going to play the best deck? No. No, 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 no. I actually hate playing the best decks. Yes, as Pat Crack Fever just said in chat, Mr. Kitten... This is Mr. Kitten. He will only oh, ever Mr. play... Kitten, if he plays any deck on Arena that beats him, he immediately looks up the deck and starts playing that one. Oh, dang. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, only <laughs> play to the top tier decks. It's insane. Oh, oh well, he's I mean, gonna get he's gonna get talking in here. Uh oh. No, it's true he, though. I must I, defend my honor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's fine. Like it's fine. You wanna you wanna play the best deck. That's I mean, out I play a lot wins. of the tier one decks on arena too. Sure. Um, and especially if you're playing the ladder, like you have to play them to yeah, to climb yeah. the ladder. Like you have to. You Especially if you want to get past jank. gold. Yeah. Because you can play jank up to gold, and then when you get gold, it's nothing but meta decks at that point for the right. most part. Exactly. And I've only gotten past gold once, and I don't think ever again. It was such a freaking grind. I don't want to do that again. I've never even gotten into gold, because that's how little I care. Yeah, <laughs> so and I'm not it, Spike. I, I feel like if the rewards for ladder were better at the end of each month, mm. then I might want to try to get past gold more, mm -hmm. but I don't, the rewards are so meh that yeah. I don't even And it's bother. really hard and you lose a lot. Even if, even when you're playing the top tier decks, you still lose a lot. Because and... everybody's just, there's always going to be that mono red player. Right. Yeah. Which or is that... okay. If you want to play mono red, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, sure. It's okay. Sure. <laughs> we don't hate you at all. No. Uh, it's c coming from the control player who will lock you down and <laughs> never let you play magic. Um, so that's the... you, right? Because I don't do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's definitely Oh, yeah. Me. Okay. Yeah. You. And there, there are times I even feel disgusted with myself. You should. You should. A little bit, though. You Just a little. You should a lot. Um, the next one yes. is a Mel or a Melvin or Melanie. Oh, okay. Um, Mel is the mechanic player, someone focused on the craft of design and development. A Mel is characterized for appreciating cards with delicate and interesting interactions as well as strong mechanics. What? A Mel appreciates that there are many different elements that have to come together to make a magic card function structurally from the color pie to the mana system to the rules to the templating to the mechanical needs of the set. That's definitely not me. What? I don't even know what that means. So it seems like they care more about the design of magic cards than actually playing them, like how they fit in the game itself okay. like, like, like they care more about if a card is designed well from what it seems like okay so that's not a style of play no okay no. that's just a person that, in the community or something and they just really love card design yeah and i guess the last one is similar to is not really a style of play is the vorthos the yeah. vorthos is basically the person the flavor player they say someone focused on the craft of the lore essentially yeah. of the of the of the magic universe gotcha um there are i do like the magic lore i'm definitely not that deep into it mm -hmm. but um i don't know i just wish it were a little bit better and more well loved yeah i I like what little I hear of the lore just like from the sets that come out, but I personally am not interested in like getting deep into reading like the old books and stuff like that. I really got into World of Warcraft lore and I read all of those books. And it's some of those are like, so good. They really are. Like they're really good, but but I just feel like I can't get into that with magic because it's like learning a whole other civilization's history. And I'm just like, not, not about that. I'm just not. Well, I mean, and to be honest, a lot of the written works of magic, they aren't that well written. Mm. And okay. it kind of makes it hard. So, okay. like, if you really wanted to get into the lore, I would just read, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, synopsises of a lot of the books and yeah you you get a general gist of the lord because it's you're, you're really not missing much yeah oh lord she's back on her wow <laughs> shit again listen to me all right so you know i don't even play wow anymore but i still love following the story of it like yeah. i haven't played battle for azeroth in months and months now but i still i i, I when when the new patch dropped i still you know read up all about it yeah I have not kept up with the current WoW lore at all. Sorry. It's not very good. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah. So you're not missing much. Okay. 
Well, good. I feel better now. Um, okay, so which, so which type of player are you? Zuby. Uh, mm, God, it's... I, it, like I said, I think it really depends on the day where most days I probably feel like a Timmy, but certain days I also feel like a Johnny because I'll just get a bug up my butt and find like some mm. cool cards I want to try to build a deck out of. Yeah. Like um like I put on Twitter I think last week or something my Tor brand mono red deck. Ooh. Um so my Tor brand mono red is I cannot wait to get this combination of cards to play out. Um repercussion and blasphemous act. Repercussion reads whenever a player's creature takes damage, their controller takes that much damage as well, too. Oh. So say say you have a lot of creatures out, and then I play Blasphemous Act, which deals 13 damage to each creature, and you have a lot of creatures out, boom, you're dead. Okay, <laughs> so you built you built that EDH deck? Yeah. And you're going to yeah. play that the next time we play EDH on 10th Street? Who yes, is? yes. Hey, it's not blue. It's not blue. It, I would rather I would rather die to mono red than blue. Like I would much rather. So there's that for sure. And and one of my favorite cards in that deck is called Impatience. So Impatience reads if if any player does not play a spell on their turn, they take two damage. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so it kind nice. of forces you so it kind of forces so the control players uh -huh. it forces them to play something. Yep. Or they're taking or they're a gonna, bunch of damage. Yeah, because my tour brand, I've got all the cards that boost up the amount of damage red can do to nice. a player. Nice. Because nice. I th I th I think I did the math. Torbrand can do up to twenty extra damage if I were to get, you know, the per all the perfect creatures out and all that. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing i want to build that deck that sounds fun it's it's i cannot wait i haven't i haven't i haven't played it yet but it's um i don't even care if it loses if, if i can just kill some people with it i'll yeah. be happy yeah it sounds fun i i honestly would not mind dying to that it sounds good and um it's because um so i've been sort of trying to challenge myself with building these decks that aren't very control based okay. Good. Um, and good. I'm trying, like I'm trying to steer away from blue as that much, even though the so next two, de even though the next two decks I'm probably gonna build are blue. No, based, no, but... no, 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 no! Don't do that. Don't, don't. <laughs> do that. You don't want to do that. But I just love blue. I can't. Sorry. So what? What? What archetype would you say you feel? You um, are? I guess I feel like I'm a mixture between Timmy, Tammy, and Johnny, Jenny. All four of them? Yeah, all four of them. <laughs> I'm a mixture right in the middle of all four of them. Because I don't feel like I'm entirely a Timmy Tammy. Because yeah. I do care whether I win or lose. I mean, if anyone's watched me play Arena on stream, like, I get real salty when I lose. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah. No, no, I, I totally understand that. But it's... But I'm... I'm... Yeah. I mean, it seems like the Timmy Tammy is just, like, pretty laid back and just wants to play to play and have fun. And I'm sort of mostly like that. But I also like to come up with some weird, interesting combos on my own that aren't, like, the meta decks. I kind of like yeah. to come up with my own stuff. It's always real bad, and it loses horrifically. But I at least it's mine, though, right? Yeah, yeah, I haven't felt like that in a lot standard, but th yeah. that's that's why I'm glad they brought Brawl in it because I like cuz I like brewing more for EDH and Brawl because mm -hmm. it's one it's one of any card. That's nice. You know, and yeah. it's um you're not having to worry about multiples of something cuz it is easier you know, to build for sure. Cuz sometimes you don't you have to think, well, is two of this card better than three or, you right? know, or Think like, about... should I just go four? Or I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm it gets you. a little bit tough, but yeah. Okay, so I, I feel like we're both kind of the same. We're sort of like a mixture of Timmy and Johnny. Yeah. Which I guess most normies would be. Probably. Or a normie would just be a full Timmy, also. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No for spikes sure. here. Sorry. No, we, we don't do spikes around here. Well, if we you do want... love the spike feeders, though. They're, they're our yes. friends. Yes. 
We just don't are, want to play are, magic with them. Sorry. But but I don't think they're 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 not competitive EDH players, are they? Yeah, the spike feeders. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. they are. Yes. 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 yes oh, yes. I thought they were just regular EDH. No. I'd see how much I know. They are all about the competitive EDH. Oh, okay. Shows sure. how much I know. Yeah. Yeah, we don't. No offense, but we don't want to play EDH with them. We would. We would yeah. just get destroyed. Yeah, that that reminds me when I went to um, Grand Prix was it Tampa or Orlando last year? I met up with Commander ninety nine. Oh yeah. And um, and I thought I knew a lot about EDH until I met him. <sighs> yeah, no, I feel like I know nothing about yeah. EDH. I feel like I know nothing about magic a lot of times. Oh wow. Well, that's how I feel all the time. <laughs> it's what it's like being a normie, but I'm okay with it. Yeah. For All right, so sure. do you want to get into our last topic here? This will probably be pretty quick. Yeah. And then we can get into our little game. Sure, let's do it. All right, so what is your favorite and least favorite color and why? Let's start with your favorite color of magic and why. My favorite color is black. Um, why? Because... I don't know. Like I didn't, I didn't start out playing with my favorite color being black. I started out playing with my favorite color probably being white because mm -hmm. I thought life gain was cool. Um, but then as I play more, I'm like, life gain is fine, but there's really no point to it if all you're doing is gaining life. So I really like black. Um, I like black mechanics. I like sacrifice, and so there's a lot of sacrificing in black decks. I like. Um, I like some black stuff where you get to pay your own life to do stuff rather than having to pay mana. Um, I like graveyard stuff. I like bringing stuff back from my graveyard because it doesn't feel so bad when your creatures get killed because then you're like, oh, I know I can bring this back. Like, it's, yeah. I'm not so upset. This isn't the end of the world. You like a lot of the recursion that black can provide. Yes. So that is my favorite color to play, for sure. And what about your least favorite? Um, my least favorite color to play is blue because I don't know when to play control spells. I don't know when to play them. Whether it's a not just a counter spell, but like a removal spell, like... Which mm -hmm. creature should I use this on? Like, is this creature a big enough threat? Like, what if it's just a medium threat? And I know they have something worse. Like, so should I save my removal for that? Or should I go ahead and use it on this? That is why I don't like blue. I also don't like, um, with a lot of blue, you know, with your removal or with your counter spells, you have to play that on your opponent's turn. And I don't... I like doing action things on my turn, like whether I'm attacking with creatures or something. I like doing something, being able to do something. And I don't I don't like playing playing cards on my opponent's turn cuz I'm just not very good and so it confuses <laughs> me. So, well, it sounds like you like you like a lot of the more interaction. Yeah. And all that you you like a lot of doing stuff and not just holding back. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So what about you? What's your favorite color to play? So, I mean, it's probably going to be a little bit obvious. It, it is blue is my favorite color. Um, With it's very, very, the other color that's very, very, very close to being my favorite is also green. Oh, um, okay. So blue, blue is mainly my favorite. Um, I control is my favorite archetype. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with because it really reminds me of playing kind of old school magic um, okay. back when I was a kid. Hmm. Um, and it's, I really, and it really depends on the standard meta too. And mm. Because um, I'm not really a big fan of the control decks of this meta. I loved um, the control decks they had back in Dragons of Tarkir. The Esper and Blue Black control they had back then. Um I, and a, the one thing I really like about control and with blue is knowing when to cast your spells because a lot of it is just, it, it, it's it's not only repetition, but it's also learning what are the threats yeah. and all that. And what, and 
And it's also really knowing what your opponent's deck can and can't do yeah. is the big thing too. Every and once you learn that, yeah, you you really know. Okay, well, if I get rid of this creature now, you know they could possibly bring out their bigger creature. But sure. let me get rid of this now because then I can always deal with that other one. Yeah. yeah. Everything you're saying about why you like blue is why I don't like blue. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm just not familiar enough with the game to know what my opponent's playing. I mean, like, you know, if I was playing standard meta all the time, that's one thing. But yeah. I just, I don't, I'm not, I just don't really play enough to even know all of the cards that are even in standard right now. So, I mean, I guess I can yeah. kind of guess for the most part. But, yeah, I don't ever... I, I can barely keep up with what I'm playing, okay? I cannot keep <laughs> up with what my opponent is playing, too. Like, I can't do it. No way. I guess maybe that's still a little bit of spike left in me because out of all the formats that I still love to follow, I still love following Standard. Mm. Um, I still love following the meta of Standard, Um to me, it's one of the most exciting ones because it changes so often. Yeah. Um, and, and with Arena, now that I can afford to play all the tier one standard decks, I don't have to spend, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars in paper magic in order to play standard now. Right. Mm -hmm. And now I can play it whenever I want. I'm mm -hmm. probably even more addicted to standard now more than ever. Yeah. Um, so it's I. So that's one of the reasons why I like blue is mainly for control. Um, yeah. Yeah. Probably my least favorite color. Oh God. Um, would probably have to be red. Oh. Okay, that's interesting. And because I, I try to think about it, because because I, it, to me, it's almost white, but I, there's just a lot about red that just um. I guess I'm not a big fan of it's I'm not a big fan of the burn. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of aggro. Yeah. Which because and and it's funny because whenever I do build an aggro deck, I play it more control than aggro. <laughs> How <laughs> um, even? Well, it's it's not just pooping out your hand all at once. Oh. It's knowing put out a few creatures, try to win with them, and then you know, they try to play something, you burn them down. Pooping um. out your hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I do, but like that was or, or 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 vomit out your hand. Blah. Is that which, better? Which one's worse? Pooping out your hand or vomiting out your hand? I think vomit out your hand is worse. Yeah, I do too. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad but, we got um, that cleared up. Yes. Yeah. I and it's just it's not a play style that I'm a big fan of. I can play aggro. I I know how to play it, but yeah. I'm not I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. Um I like aggro, but I don't know. For some it, reason it also I'm really not depends. like drawn to it. Yeah, and also depends on the aggro deck. Like um one of my favorite aggro decks that I've ever played, it was something that can't Saffron Olive actually came up with for modern mm -hmm. like years ago called Eight Whack which is a lot of low-costing uh, goblins, and you just oh. play them and try to win by turn three, turn four. Um, I sort of did a janky combination of it. I can't remember any of the card names, but you play a zero-casting cost artifact like Ornithopter or Memnite, and then oh, you, you play a card called Koldotha Rebirth on turn one, get three 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens, okay. and then you play a turn two Bushwhacker, which pumps up all those goblins, so you're dealing six six damage by turn two, okay. and then or, or six or nine damage by turn two. Then by turn three, you try to pump them up again and win. Hmm. I don't like um, I don't like a lot of the mono red decks because the creature like the creature archetype is usually goblins, and I don't think they're very cute. So hey, go goblin rebel master can be cute. And Legion War Boss is cute. Eh, they're not. They're they're they're, they're my favorite goblins. Cute. They're mm -hmm. they're okay, but they're not super cute. So that's one of the main reasons why I don't like them. What about Goblin Matron? I don't know what Goblin Matron looks like. She she's is the, she cute. Does she wear a hat? She yeah, she wears like yeah. a hat or a, or a kerchief or something. Yeah, I don't know. she's kind of like an old. She's kind of like an old lady. So. 
Old ladies can be cute. Sure, they can be, but not her though. So our oh okay, <laughs> that's gonna have to be one of our games then. I'm gonna have to find a whole bunch of goblins. And Pixie rates them on a cuteness scale of Let's one to ten. Let's do it! Yes! <laughs> Let's Hold do up. it! I, I'm going to write that down in our ideas folder because that is going to have to be something we do. Yes. Um, um, so Efren says the secret lair goblins are cute. And they are kind of cute. Kind yeah, of. Yeah, Pixie rates goblin cards by cuteness. And we can do other... Uh, typically... We can, we can write anything by cuteness. I'll totally do that. That's a great idea. God, what are some other creatures? Vampires. Um, that's so easy, no, though. No, that would be such a good one. They're not all <sighs> cute, though. The, a good 99% of them are cute. Some of them are gross. Like, Night of the Ebon Legion. That one's actually kind of gross. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, ooh, we could do rats. Oh, we could do rats. That would be a good one. Because um, there are some gross rats. Yeah. What are some other ones? Oh, chat, help us out here. What are some other ones we could do? Yeah, what are some creature types that we could rate by cuteness? Um, what about um, some of those weird old creatures? The weird old creature That doesn't... What about, like, the slivers or something like Ooh, that? Ooh, yes, sliver. That's my favorite creature type. And we could do elves as oh, well. Oh, yeah, I could do elves. Oh, weirds? Is that a creature type? Weirds? Are, but are there a lot of weirds, though? I don't, I mean, that is a creature type. I just don't know if there's a lot of, a lot of them, though. Um, eye creature type? Eye creature type? I think there are three. Um, we could do dragons, dinosaurs. Ooh, dragons. That would be good. Dinosaurs, yeah. No, but I, th I think we need to start out with goblins first, because that'll be... Um... Okay, we're apparently... We apparently need to do an entire episode rating every creature type by their cuteness. Yes, be it, it'll fun. be... And it'll be official. Um, Super the, official. And wizards will have to... Uh, endorse make us. Endorse us and make us the official cuteness raider tester things. Yes. I don't oh, know what you'd call it. Yeah. Oh, minotaurs. That's right. Oh, oh no. I'm... He said minerar. <laughs> Minerars. <laughs> he said minerar. I, I... Good job, Efren. He, he corrected himself. But we can still see the mistake, so. Yeah. It's funny. All right. It's funny. Uh. I guess, do we want to go on to our game now? Yeah, let's play our game. All right, so what are we playing tonight, Pixie? So the game we're playing tonight is... How do you pronounce that magic card? <laughs> Hold on, we're going to play our theme music. Do -do 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 -do. Magic for normies. <laughs> yes! Magic for I normies. I still can't hear it. I know, I'm sorry. How do you pronounce that magic card? This is going to be great. Do this do is going to be so do great. Do. How do you pronounce the magic card? <laughs> yes! That was good. We, we, need to, we need to have Clint start doing the theme song for all these games. Every, oh, yeah. Every single yeah. segment. That'd yes. Be great. He's going to be like, I'm out. Or he's going to be like, you got to pay me to do this. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so we all found right. a bunch of random magic cards with... Really weird names on them, and we're gonna try to pronounce them. So I think this is gonna be a really great game. So great. All right, hold on. I'm getting my computer ready because I'm gonna share my screen again. Okay. Um, I think I am ready to go. Let me share my screen. Let me know when everyone can see my desktop. All right, I can see your desktop. Zuby just murdered the pronunciation of Arachiomancer. Is that not how you say it? Arachiomancer? <laughs> how, do, how, do you, how, do you, how do you pronounce the name? Oh, uh, shit. Arc. Arc. Arca Ar Arca Arcaomancer? Oh, oh, it's Ar is Arcaeo. it Arcaomancer? Yeah. <laughs> it's not Arachio? Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. See? Yeah, we can. Okay, so we can see your desktop. Okay. All right, this first Archaeo card. Archaeomancer. 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 Yes. Okay. 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 All right. All right. So, Pixie. Yes. Let's start off with you. How do you say this name? And then okay. I'll try to say it too. Okay. This one's actually pretty easy. I'm I'm pretty sure Is it's, it it's Hanware Garrison. 
Are, are you sure it's like Han, Hanware or Han, Hanweir? It could be Han, Hanware Garrison. Oh, it well, could be th- Hanver Garrison. That it's because it, it does it the, the arc does kind of look more German. It really like, does. Like look at those buildings. Be... Very. European? Well, and, and this is from Eldritch Moon too, the Gothic set. So it Very could be Gothic. Hanver Han, Hanver Hanver Garrison. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's probably ha- Hanweir. Right, Andy in chat says Onweir. Onweir. How do you? How do you? On-weir. How, how do you? On, on where? Um, How do you say the W E I R? Where or weir? Weir. I would say weir. I would. I would say weir. But... Oh, sort of like weird, but without the D. Right. Exactly. Oh shit. Yeah. But Han weir. I Han think Garrison. If I ever eh? see this card, I'm gonna say Hanvir Garrison. Hanvir Garrison. Eh? Yeah. And then you just say and, Garrison and you, normally. And, and you gotta add in the A because the can <laughs> to for the Canadian Ted. Sure, sure. Hanvir, a eh? Oh, oh where is how I pronounce it. And, and Efren says in chat, Hanwire. 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 No. <laughs> Hanwire, because I'm from Texas. Hanwire. <laughs> Hanwire Garrison. <laughs> hey, hey, you play that Hanwire Garrison? <laughs> when, don't forget, when Hanwire Garrison attacks, you put two one one red human creature tokens on the battlefield tapped and attacking. Oh, my gosh. Males so with Hanver. Hanware battlements. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I, I, I think, so we've officially decided the official pronunciation for official. this called is Hanver. Han, Hanver. Hanver. Garrison. Han, oh, we need the little H. Hanver. Hanver. Yes. Hanver Garrison A. <laughs> yeah. With the A. At a. The... a. All sure. right. Let's go to the next one here. Okay. How do you pronounce this name? Oh, okay. Um, here we go. Dejeru. Dej- eyes open. <laughs> Dejeru? I mean, Dejeru. Dejeru. That's how I say it. Dejeru. Dejeru. You probably don't pronounce the D at all, right? It's probably Jeru. Or, well, well, if it's Jeru without the D is silent, is it Jeru? Like Jeru or Jeru? Oh, Jeru. 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 Yeah. Jeru. Yeah, okay. So the, I think the D, yes, the D is probably silent. Just like, you know, Django, the movie Django. Oh, yeah, that's right. You don't say Django. Front of it. Right. You don't say Django, but I mean, you could if you're like Django. If you're from Texas. Right. You could be like, okay. Dejeru. <laughs> or, well, okay, okay. Let's not pick on Texas. Let's just pick on Efren. Okay. We'll just, or, yeah. I mean, I'm in Tennessee, so I'm, I'm allowed. And you're in Florida. Like, we're allowed to. We're in the South. Well, I'm in Central Florida, which is more Northern than. And people Northern in Florida, Florida don't have an accent, do they? They, they have a Southern accent. Hey, I, oh, really? when I get, when I get drunk, I do get a little bit of a twang. <laughs> No, I'm, okay. I'm serious. My twang starts to come out. <laughs> okay, well, we'll have to listen for that next time. <laughs> I guess I'll have to get drunk next time. I don't know if that'd be a good thing, though. Yeah, we can do that. Magic for Normies, episode three, drunk episode. <gasps> oh, shit. Jiru, like Jeremy. J- oh, J- 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 Jeru? Jeru? Jera. Jeru. J- J- Jera. Jeru. Jeru. Or J- is it Jera or Jeru? I don't, because um, Jeremy is Jera, like a ra, like ra, like ra, ra sound. Magic yeah. for drunkies. <laughs> Magic for drunkies. That's a good. J-Run. J- J-Run. Um, I think it's Jeru. And I, I could uh, be Starting super like wrong. Jeremy starts. J- Jeru. Jeru. De Jeru. 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 I don't like it. I don't either. That's a that's a <laughs> bad name. Sorry, Jeru, with eyes open. My eyes are gonna be closed. Why do you have to specify like with your with eyes open? Like everybody's <laughs> eyes are open, bro. Like what? Da da Jeru. Hey, don't make fun of us, Andy. We're trying to figure this out. <laughs> da Jeru. Hey, we're doing our best. We're doing our best. Okay. All right, that's the next one. I have no idea how to. Okay. Is is this another one of those silent, 
letters in the front? Uh, this is, okay. So first of all, this is a vampire. Oh, okay. I like that. Oh, um, snap. I didn't even realize I'm going to yeah. go, but it's a Demir vampire, so. Which is not bad. Yuck. You should like Demir. It's black. Half black. Oops. Hey, whoa. I didn't mean, whoops. <laughs> okay. I didn't mean to do that. You didn't see that. No, I didn't. I actually didn't. Okay. So I think it's, um, z z okay. <laughs> Zadek. <laughs> I think it's that Zadek. It's probably Zadek. Zadek. It's probably just Zadek. <laughs> Zadek, Lord of Secrets. Yeah, it's it's probably just Zadek. But why at, why have the S in the front then? If it's just Zadek, is is it Zadek? Zadek. Zadek. I don't know. I feel like we're adding an another uh, syllable in there that we shouldn't be. Says Zadek. Says Zadek. Sad deck. Sad deck. Sad? No. I don't think but you there, make an but there's S only sound one, at all. Well, there's only one D, though. How do you have sad deck? Sad deck. Sad. Be, if it's pronounced sad deck, it'd be sad deck. I don't not sad deck. Sa yeah, like, because you're playing Demir, it's a sad deck. Right? <sighs> yeah. Wah, wah. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's sad deck. Zadek. Yeah. yeah, I think the S is silent. You again, know what? Is... I've just changed my mind. I think it's Zadek. Zadek? Yeah. Zay? Yeah. Z. Zay. Z. I think phonetically it would be Zadek, Lord of Secrets. Zay. Zay. Yeah, Zay. Yeah. Zay. What, 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 is there a word that starts with Z A? Um, no. That I can think of? Zay. Zappos. It's Zappos. a website where you buy shoes. Zadek. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's Zadek. So, so Zappos, Zadek. But, but Zappos is Z A P P O S. So that's true. Because it has two consonants after the A, it has like the short Whoa. A sound. Whoa, are you an uh, English major? No. Here? Everybody oh, knows okay. this. It's basic phonetics, Zuby. I don't know this. I'm pretty sure it's Zadek. I am confident that we, we, it we should... is Zadek, Lord of Secrets. Oh my god. You know what would be funny is if we were to do this game again and we could actually get a actual linguist <sighs> on the on the show. Well, That'd they're names whole... too. Like these are names. So it's kind of like they don't even fall under grammar or any rules, right? Not grammar, but... I don't know. Who knows? You can pronounce any name yeah. any way you want. Because it's yeah. a name. Anyone else remember that video? What video Which are you video? talking about? OMG Shoes Zappos? No. I don't know. I don't that. know that video. Alright, so we've officially decided this is Zadek? Z Z no, Z Z Zadek. 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 I already forgot. Yeah, um, it's okay. It's Zadek. Um, Alright, next we've got... How do you pronounce this? Okay. Ooh. Um, ser serendib. Oh, I didn't even see that second word. Oh, shoot. Seren <laughs> serendib ifrit. What? Serendib? Serendib ifrit? ifrit? Serendib. No, hey, it's hey. dib. Hey, hey, you know, did you, did you try out the serendib out there? Serendib ifrit. <laughs> Okay, so even in the flavor text, it says summoners of Ifriti. What is what is an Ifrit? What is this? This is the creature type. No, and, and a free is like a is like an Indian demon or something like that. Oh, so you're saying Ifrit, and I'm saying e, I'm saying Ifrit, and you're saying if Ifrit. I, I think it's pronounced Ifrit. Oh, okay, I messed it up then. Maybe chat correct us because we're dumb. Okay, so I think it's Serendib Ifrit. It, si serendib Ifrit or Ifrit. And that, now you're making me say Ifrit. Yeah, but you S said Ifrit. If Ifrit. Efren says <laughs> Ifrit. Oh, no. wait, was it? That was a game on Windows, wasn't it? We're away from the Yeti, Ski Free. Oh my god, yes, it was. <laughs> you go down the hill yeah. and, and you just try not to get killed. Ifrit it, or Ifrit? I don't know. Ifrit or Ifrit? I think it's I think it's Ifrit. 
Efreet. I think it's Efreet because that's what I said at the beginning and I'm just going to stick to it. No, I'm not thinking of Ifrit here, all right? Ifrit from Final Fantasy? Okay, no, I'm not. Okay. I don't know that. I think don't... it's... What? You know what, Efren? Don't drag you into this. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. Oh, boy. I'm dragging you. Um, So, okay, so w w did we decide on... Is it Serendib Ifrit or Efrit? It's probably Efrit. Right? That just sounds F more appropriate. F Wait, what did you say? I said Ifrit. Ifrit. Not Ifrit. <laughs> Serendib <laughs> Ifrit. There we go. Okay, yes. That's what we agree on. Or, oh, right. God, I cannot say this card name I at know, all. right? I saw this one and I was like, oh, we're adding this to the list. Oh, good. Because in our D&D &D episode of 10 Street. Yep. Um, we fought this I, guy. I, I or the sun no you guys fought the sun and um who was it john and was it john or johnny gave him mushroom john john gave him mushrooms that's right and got him like completely obliterated and high yeah, it was great. um so and i could not pronounce this guy's name um <laughs> have a, do you, you you try to pronounce it or should okay. i or, do you know how to pronounce it um i don't think i've ever said it before Bor Borbergi, oh god, Bor Borbori, nope, nope. Borgamos. Bor Bor, wait a sec. This Y is throwing me off so bad. Borgamos, Borgamos. No, that can't be right. Bor Bor. Borigamos. Borborigmos. Okay, what? Okay, wait. B B Borborigmo. Borborigmos? No, I don't like that. Yeah, it is because you're. I don't like that. But look, if the, if the if that Y was an I, it would be Borborigmos. But Borborigmos? No, he, Borbor. He's saying, no, he's saying Borborigmos. Borbor. Bor, 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 Borborigmos. Bor, well, bor, maybe bor, it is. Borborigmos? But be is it wouldn't it be Borbo Rigmos? Bor I think it's Borbor Rigmos. Saying, bu, 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 I can't <laughs> fuck <follow. laughs> Borigmos. Borgamos. Borgamos. No, it's not Borborgimos because the Y is before the G. I'm i I'm pronouncing the G the G. Right, but you're saying Borborgimos. But it's Borborigmos. 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 Yes. Borborigmos. Yes. There we go. Yes. Borborigmos. Borborigmos. Yes. Borborigmos. You got oh, it. Oh my god, that's fucking tough. <laughs> <laughs> oh know, man. Right? That name is insane. Yeah. Who came up with that? Wizards. Damn it, wizards! You know we're not that smart. <laughs> I think we got it. I'm uh, not, I'm not going to say it again. I can't. Yeah, I give up. I physically oh. can't. Oh gosh. Okay. You okay, these are the cards that you picked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't look at like I just tried not to look at them, you know. Okay. Uh Guafa has a <laughs> profiteer. Okay, this okay, that was pretty easy. You're saying Guafa? I think it's Guafa Hazard. Oh, gosh. Okay. Guafa Hazard Profiteer. Guafa. Like Did waffles? Did I say Guafa? You said Guafa. Like, wa like waffles. Waffles. <laughs> <laughs> you you going to hit with the waffle ball? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. It's probably Guafa. You're probably right. Guafa Hazard Profiteer. Yeah. Like okay. Gua like Guafa Hazard. He, he 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 has Guapa. it. Everyone has a price. Sure. He has it. has it. It literally says everyone has a price at the bottom. Or the only other thing, Guafa Hazid. Oh, maybe. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know either. Guafa Hazid. Guafa Hazid profiteer. <laughs> Guafa Hazid. 
we're just reading the chat. Andy in chat is yes. telling us gua ah because we have to pronounce it phonetically because we're like five year old kids. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> we can't pronounce shit. I think it's gua. I think it's guafa though. Hazid or Hazid. I mean, I just said Hazid to begin with because I, th- I of think the it's word Hazid. Hazard. Yeah, I think it's Hazid. Okay. I think guafa Hazid. Like guafa has it. Has it. All right. I, don't know. I I think we can agree on that. Uh, yeah. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah. Sure. Oh god. Um. Ah. Uh, okay. Nevenerals disc. Did I do I, it? I I always pronounce as Nevenrol. Nevenrol. So, so ne- is it? N- n- Nevenerol. Yeah, it is Nevenerol. Because because if we're if we're going by Borga book, Borby logic here, right, right. <laughs> this could be Nevenerol. It is Nevenerol. It should be Nevenerol. Efren in chat says Nevenerol. Nevenerol. Like, well, like Efren's I, like I, wrong. If we go based on Borbigamo, Bor, Bor, Borigmos. Whatever, ah, whatever. Um, Bor Borigmos. But Borigmos, magic for Borbies. <laughs> magic for Borbies. Oh my gosh. Um. I mean, so unless the Y is silent here, it's Nevenerals. Yeah, if it's silent, it's Nevenerol. If it's not, then Nevenerol. Who Nevenerol decides if it's silent or not? We do. Okay, so should, I say it's not. It if you go. I don't think it is be- based on Borby logic. Mm-hmm. I don't think it is either. Nevenerol. I think it's Nevenerol's disc. Yes. Yep. All right. It is official. We got it. It's official. That's it, folks. Oh, God. How the fuck do you say this? <laughs> Pardon. Okay. Also, like, this art is kind of cute. I don't cute? know. Cute? How I is know. this cute? I don't know. It's just, is the thing hurt? I don't want it to be hurt. Okay, if you think this is cute, I'm kind of scared of what your definition of, like, human cuteness is. <laughs> human cute. <gasps> hey, we could write humans, too. Like, magic cards, you know, on their cuteness. We could add you that scare to the me. list. You're scaring me now. Um, I don't know. Something about it. But he looks kind of scared, so maybe it's not cute. Okay, right, so, ha- so how do we pronounce this? What card is this? I don't even know. Pithithis? Pithithis? But P-H makes an F sound, right? So, so, Pithithith? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Pithithis. Pithithis, right? Pithithis is. Pithithis? This is so, be... so I think you're right. It has to be an F. The PH has to be F. Yeah. Fathesis. Fathesis. It's just Fathesis. problematic because who puts an F next to a TH? Like that's just oh, you know, I was difficult. just about to Google how to pronounce this. I don't want to do that though. No, because I, I feel like that'll be cheating. <laughs> it is cheating. I, I almost did it. So, so Fathesis. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's Fathesis. <laughs> so everyone who's listening out there is not seeing the video. It's P H T H I S I S. Yeah. Phthisis. That's and it's um this is the Commander 2013 um printing. I don't know if this had any other printings. Yeah, I don't either. Phthisis. Yeah, a- Andy and chat saying Phthisis too. Phthisis. Yep. I think Oh god. That's all I can I- come up with. Yeah, I, I think it's agreed. It's officially phthisis. Yes. All right, our next one. Okay. Uh, ooh. Um, I think I actually know how to pronounce it. Okay. So you go first. <laughs> oh, God. Um, Scytherix. No, I think dragon. it's actually pronounced Scytherix. Scytherix. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I said yeah. Skithyrix. <laughs> Skithyrix or something? Yeah. I tried. I think I think it's pronounced Skithyrix. Skithyrix. That's probably right. That sounds way cooler than what I said. 
Yeah, and plus he has Infect. Nothing's cooler than Infect. Yeah, I like this card. And I like that art, too. It, it actually like is really cool art. It, it almost kind of reminds me of, you know, going back to WoW. It almost kind of reminds me of WoW. Yeah, yep. World of Warcraft art. Like, one of the dragon aspects just overlooking Grizzly Hills. Yeah, look at that. And does that not look like Grizzly Hills? It or does. like in a, Yeah. And um, Ice Crown and all that? Yep. Um, but Lord like, Ra I like that this artist's name is just Chippy. Chippy. Yeah. I wonder if, I wonder if Chippy has made other magic because this is really good art. It is good. I like it. Scar I, I'd like a play mat of this. Scytherix. Scytherix. Thank you. I'm struggling with this one. Yeah, it is a little bit tricky. I'm um, trying too hard. It's, that's what it is. Yeah. Scytherix. I got it. it Ain't no WoW normies. Yeah, you're, you're, I, I would have to concede to that. I, I think Pixie and I aren't WoW normies. We are not WoW normies. Nope. Nah. Are you still playing WoW, by the way? No, not really. Okay. Yeah, me neither. Sorry. Nope. You're good. Um, <laughs> all right. Next. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, God. Look at this. Look at this fancy lady. Um. Okay. Here we go. Heather Hudson, what did you, how did you name this? <laughs> <I don't laughs> that's the, think that's she the, that's the artist, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, okay, Mariki Re Barrett. Mariki Re Barrett? Mariki yeah. Re Barrett? We said the same thing, so that must be what it is. Or Mary, Ma is it, we said Mariki, is it Mari M Mariki? Mariki? Or Maybe it's just Marik. Marique. Yeah, or it could be Marik. Marik Re Barrett. Marik Re Barrett. Do you think it's Barrett? Barrett, maybe? Okay. Like Barut? Like Beirut? Like it could be Beirut. Could be Be like Beirut. <laughs> but Beirut is B E R U I T, I think. I don't know. Mariki Re Bear? Ma Marik Re Barry. Maybe it's French. Ah, okay, I see what you mean. Mariki Ribeir. Oh, Je Mariki Ribeir. Think the two. Je m'appelle Mariki Ribeir. Oh my uh, gosh. J'ai acheté soutien gauche pour moi. Oh, this is. You want to know what I just said? French for normies now. What did you say? I said I buy underwear for myself. Do you? Wow. <laughs> so proud of you. Do you see that Just this when lady... I thought Zuby couldn't get any sexy. <laughs> oh, he's speaking French. Watch out. Oh, 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 hey, hey, hey. You better hope John doesn't watch this. I know, right? Yeah. Um. So, Mariki Ribeir. I, I think I like that. The T is silent. Yeah. Marika Ribeir. Yeah, I like that better, too. It and you gotta fancy. add in the... Yeah. And she looks fancy, for sure. Yeah, she looks like a queen. Very I think she like she queen. has to be a queen because she has a crown on her. There's a uh, crown on her lap. I don't know why it's not on her Well, head. Well, I think she was traveling in the woods and okay. her and her entourage had to stop and rest. And so she went outside of her carriage, okay. sat down. On some you know, huge just... skulls. Yeah, because one. Oh, they are skulls. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. The, she, she, she was telling her painter, like, hey, Instagram me right now. Yeah. And she put the she put the crown on her uh, knees. And she's got her hand just like I don't know. Pointing. Yeah. Holy at shit! Her I didn't face. even realize those were skulls. Wow. Yeah, I know it's weird. She's kind of she's kind of dat she's kind of dark. Well, she she is um she is Esper. It's true. Look at that. She is Esper. Damn. Gain control of target creature as long as you control Merrick Ribeir. <laughs> when Mary Cribeir leaves play oh, there or you go. becomes Marie untapped, Cribeir. yeah, destroy that creature. It can't be regenerated. See, this is where we need Ted because is is this going to be pronounced Canadian French or French French, oh. or is this going to be like Polynesian French? Marie Cribeir. Who I, knows? I I, I I this is beyond me, honestly. All right, wizards, get back to us. Yes, please do. We're waiting. <laughs> Uh, we we should reach out to Mishy and tell her like, hey, listen, this is, you got to do this. Pronunciation clarification. Yeah. Please. Oh, you know we should be okay. So I know how we said everything that we're saying is official. We yes. should be wizard should hire us to be the official pronunciation 
guide people things. Absolutely. They can just direct people to us and we'll tell people how to pronounce cards. So we can't ever be wrong because we're the ones deciding the pronunciation. I I see nothing wrong with that. No, it's a great idea. Um, It's a great idea. All right. Here's our last one. And, and it's not the name of the card, granite gargoyle. No, because that's normal. There, there is flavor text here. I'm going to zoom in on zoom flavor text. Zooming in. You are really zooming in. That's great. Thank you. Perfect. Can, can you see it okay? Yes, we can see it. Uh, that's so great. All right. You want to try to pronounce this first, or should I? Oh, why don't you go for it? All right. Asmora nomadicadacinacula de Dakar. What? <laughs> oh my All right, gosh. Your turn. Okay, so this is the name of the Underworld cookbook, apparently? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, th- th- this is this is old, old, old flavor text here. I don't okay. think this has shown up since 1993. God. Or, or 95, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's as more Dicka diastanacle da car. <laughs> Did I say it? I don't know. As Mora Nomar Dicka de Stanacle da car. Oh, God, that is hard. It is. That's so insane. Because you, because it's like. As Mora Nomar is easy at that sure. point. And then you sort of get the Dickaday. Yeah. Stenacle de Car. Yeah, that, 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 like, when you get like two thirds of the way through, you're just like, where? I don't even know what yeah. letter I'm on anymore. Cause they're, they're, they're weird. Yeah. Pronunciation. It's a weird for, like, combination. Your, for your tongue or whatever. Yeah, Paula Dean did not write this cookbook. No, no she did she not. Did not. So as Mora no Mardica de Stenacol de Car. Yes, that was pretty good. I think you got it. Are you it. wanna try? <laughs> as Mora no Mardica de Stenacol de Car. There you go. I think <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. We're gonna go with oh that. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't wanna do it again. No, I don't either. Oh my gosh that that was a that was fun though. Yeah, I think that was I think that was a great segment. Yeah, that was fun. That was um, it was uh, s- definitely some tough names out there to pronounce. Holy crap! Yeah, I feel like every time I make a video, like a pack opening video, where I'm opening a pack and reading yeah. the cards, I'm just like, I have no idea how to pronounce any of these. I felt like that yeah. a lot with um, the Theros cards because there's like all these like weird gods and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, t- those cards we just looked at those are those were like beyond wild, especially that last yeah. one. Yeah, for sure. That was um oh, that that was really fun though. We need to do that again and um yeah try try to find some hard ones out there because I I spent maybe like twenty minutes today trying and I only found three. Um, <laughs> It was. Yeah. It, it, it's tough to find them out there. I just Google searched it. Magic cards that are hard to pronounce. And I found a Reddit oh. post where a bunch of people had listed it. So I was like, oh, here we go. Oh, so. I, I actually tried searching set by set. Wow. <laughs> so we, you're doing things the hard way. That's what I do. Oh, that's okay. Well, I think that is it for tonight's show. That was a pretty good show tonight. We had a lot of cool stuff to talk about. and um, Yeah, lots of fun little stuff game. to go over. I think it was a great episode. Thank you, chat, yeah. for hanging out with us all night. Yeah, we had some great people in chat tonight. We had Andy, yeah. Efren, and Ted. And um, I know I saw Muhammad in there earlier, but he yeah. he may have went to bed because I know he his the time zone for him is... Um, Yep. Pretty early. We saw JJ, JJ MTG. Yep. Uh, Mr. Kitten stopped by quickly. <laughs> yes, he did. Um, I, I think that's about it. Unless I'm, if I'm missing anybody, sorry. 
Yeah. Um, but thank but you all for coming by. we are grateful for by. all of you. Um, so, yeah. Zuby, where can people find you on social media if they want to look up the rest uh, of your they, content? They can find me on Twitter at Magic with Zuby, on Instagram at Magic underscore with underscore Zuby, and they can email me at mtgzuby at gmail.com, and they can find my Magic with Zuby podcast on any podcast app out there because it's everywhere now. Wow. Everywhere, yes. you say. Literally everywhere. Oh, my goodness. Awesome. And what about you, Pixie? Um, everyone can find me on Twitter at PKP underscore magic. And they can find me right here on my Twitch channel that you all are already on. And also on YouTube, on my YouTube channel where I make silly Magic the Gathering comedy videos at Pixie Kitten Plays. So once again, thank you everyone for hanging out tonight. I'm going to um, try to send you over to raid someone else's channel. Let me oh, cool. see who's online right now. I don't know who's cool that's online. Um, let me send you over to... How about um, TrueX MTG? I think he's pretty cool. I don't know who that is. Let me see if I can find him. He actually lives in Nashville, just like I do. So it looks like he's oh. playing some arena. So cool. y'all can check out his raid. Have a great night, everybody. Good night. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>